bad they were like trying to locate me and my phone kept getting really hot and it got to the point where like yeah that phone, happens a lot so even if the phone wasn't there and my son was having it too and I think it was like half on the phone but I feel like, like is that what you guys mean like is that happening to you guys too I'm getting the sharks a lot in my face in my chest all over my body yeah, I have I have some of those sense of symptoms, but see, I have a, um, I have I was telling them last night I have an X-ray. What happened was I had surgery in 2009. They told me I had a second MRI come back that I had cancer, so they told me they had to go in and do a uh, biopsy. And so I went in the hospital. I was there for a week. They gutted me like a cow, um, and I thought I had biopsy. They told me I had no cancer. Um, I had a car accident in 2013, and they rushed me into the ER, and they had to x-ray me because my calf hit me in the chest real hard in my stomach, and, well, you know, solar plexus. And so they x-rayed me, and I have linear metallic density overlapping my abdomen, which is an actual medical device, which is really high-tech. It has positive and negative charging, and I also have my spleen missing. My spleen is not there. So I had a follow-up MRI to verify, and yes, my spleen is gone. And so I did a little bit of research on, you know, what I have. But the operative report says I have a simple biopsy, and the doctor's nowhere to be found, and the hospital denies any um, patent. So. And you tell any lawyers, I told my federal attorney friend lawyer, and he was like, I ain't dying. I said, what? I said, you wouldn't help me in court. I said, I got proof. And he's like, I ain't dying. <laughs> so I'm like, wow. Well, he's like, hey, the, a, a lawyer told you that? Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. He's a good friend of mine, yeah. So I actually can't put a cell phone next to my right ear. And if I go into um, Best Buy, where they have a lot of um, Wi-Fi, uh, my ear, it goes wah, wah, wah. And I can't put my own cell phone like in a radius of my right ear. And or if I go near the big cell phone tower downtown, it'll just go, my eardrum just goes wah, wah, wah. And I can't stand it. I have to leave. <laughs> So, yeah, they got me. I'm a mom, and they knew I had to work. They got me. <laughs> yeah, they're, you know, I've been getting gangsta out for almost three years, and it, every single day, you know, you, sometimes I wake up, and I'll, and I'll actually forget for a set, for, sometimes for a split second, I'll, I'll think of, I'll start thinking like I thought before I was getting stalked and then it'll kick in like man if I go out today I'm gonna be getting stalked you know have you ever had that moment like damn all like like you know like Groundhog Day like not again like one more day I gotta be stalked again like it, it's like mind blowing Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like all the like, there's like homeless people like dying and stuff in the streets. I'm like, can't we give some of them the prepaid credit cards? And then they're like, no, we can only give it to them if they're helping us stalk you. Oh. Do you all say stuff to your stalkers? Like, oh, trying to get a, trying to get a, uh, trying to get a, um, uh, debit card, trying to get a woman card. Do you trying to get we trying to get? What are you gonna get? Yeah, I talk, I talk to them like that sometimes. Yeah. Oh, I, we didn't even know you. You did. I saw you call in. You. you what happened? You. You dropped. You got off the phone. No, the, 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 the phone. Oh. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I'm. I'm. I'm not getting any speakers. 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 I'm not getting any speak
didn't even know what she was on either. Yeah. I wanted to hear what you had to say. I, I hope you, can you repeat what you had to say? Because I, I swear what you were saying sounded like something that my friend was trying to tell me happened. And I was like, okay, maybe a little bit nuts. But then I started reading about it, and I'm like. About what? severe 
has severe pain. Like I say, can't even, they can't even do ganglion blocks to block out my um, limb. Um, they can't, uh, can't do this on me because uh, I have like a torn rotator cuff again. They did both my shoulders and were again because of the accident. So um, they can't even really sew it up because they can't medicate me because I'm tapped out. So um, I'm tapped out on my medicine, unfortunately. Um, and I handle it very well. I've been on the same dose through all these surgeries, but when you have uh, particular surgeries, like I just had my spine and my neck done, um, and that's when the guy hit me again, right after I had my neck brace taken off, and I know that was a setup because it was so obvious. But, um, you know, uh, there's nothing I can do. I sustain very well considering um, what I go through. I sustain very, very well, a very, very strong person. Uh, amazingly strong. <laughs> so, yeah. Excuse me, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, I've, I've seen it all mm-hmm. over and over and over. And and they and, I, and, I, and I'm extremely, extremely level-headed and extremely strong. And, yeah. <laughs> so. Hey, do we got room for one more? I guess so. Is all, are all... Huh? Huh? Um, a friend, a, a woman named Erin. I've been talking to her for a couple weeks. She actually, she, she was, she's getting gang stalked bad, and she contacted, she contacted me first, and she ended up in a psychiatric ward, and like these people, she, she was running around in the middle of the night for three days, knocking on doors, and no one would help her, and the cops took her to jail, and like were threatening her and stuff. And, it, it, like, you got it. Her, her story is crazy, but she just got to the point where her family will listen to her now. And, um, she, I told her I was in a conference and she said she wanted to come in. And I was wondering how many of us are in here now? There's five of us, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. And Sasha, you're still on, right? Yeah. Sasha's on? Sasha? Oh, uh, okay, so I'm going to call Aaron, um, everybody's cool with that? Okay, okay, one second. Hey, Aaron, what's up? Hey, what do you say? Hey, you're in, Aaron, you're in the conference call. There's, there's. Am I already? Okay, let me turn my music on then, because I'm like in the middle of cooking. I have a whole bunch of kids here, and I'm being a uh, super chef, wonder mom. <laughs> right. So who, who's with us? Who's here? Um, there's a bunch of us. Um, there, uh, <laughs> you know who I am, so um, uh, everybody. I know. And I know Lisa. Is Lisa there? No. No? Okay, so everybody needs to do some stuff. I'm Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. That was only one. You have lots of girls. Girls are great. Because, you know, we make up 70%. So it's important. 70% of of gang stalking victims are women. So. Right, Aaron, Aaron. How long have you been getting gang stalked? Um, it's been almost two years for me now, but um, it's just kind of come to like it reveal itself to me in a really big way over the past little while. So it's really hit home. But the best part about it is like I've just had the best week. Like I really had a depressive, 
you know, period thereafter when I started feeling like, you know, nothing was ever going to be the same again. And I, that innocence that I kind of lost, it was, I was grieving that part of, you know, it's like a death. I really was grieving that, like, innocence and that naive spirit, you know? But anyway, today I, I just, like, my son, he just says to me, well, you know, even if they are, like, so what? You know, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Who cares? Just go about your business. Do your life. And, like, I've been doing that today, and it's just incredible how much power I got back. I'm like, I'm not going to try to rebuild what they've already destroyed. I'm going to reclaim what I already lost. Like, I can salvage some stuff. Like, I really feel like I'm fighting in the best possible way because, to me, they just don't exist anymore. I see my family. I see what I need to see, and the rest of it, it just fades into the background. And that's been really empowering for me and it happened really fast like I just feel like I got back on top of the energy of my life and I stopped allowing them to dictate and it's just been amazing hello someone answer me (laughs) are you the only thing for three years you have no actually for me it's been only two years but like over six different cities I was a gang check generational. I think my mom uh, came through Ellis Island, my grandparents from Scotland, and I believe it came through that line. Uh, right. I believe I'm with the GI. And, um, I was a for somebody whose family was mafia, and I think that yeah, really... I was married to the mafia. That's awesome. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, shot a whole new plane, girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got some interesting yeah. ex-in-laws. I'll tell you that much. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on. Are you into researching? Sorry. Oh, are you into researching? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Of course, yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm more. I'm not so much about researching as I am about connecting with other people and you know bringing them into our network because we need to build our own. Right? Yeah, I don't understand what, what got you gangstop. Like, are you spiritual? Oh, for me? How did I get on the list? Um, yes. I check out my YouTube channel. I have, um, like, Star Valley Girl. It's two words. Star Valley is one word. And G-R-R-L. And you can see my videos that tell a little bit about, like, what it was. Um, but, I mean, I'm not exactly sure, but I traced it back to um, my first really big incident with the police and just getting charged and locked up and... So I, I said a lot of things. I'm an anarchist. I create a lot of friction everywhere I go. So um, for me, it's more like I can't even narrow down what it is that I did that would get me on the list. There's probably about 20 things that could probably get me on there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a pain in the ass. Aaron, 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 tell, tell him, hey, Aaron, tell him about how you had to run around in the middle of the night and knock on doors and stuff. And, and... Oh, yeah. Well, they, I, just, I just went through like a marathon. I left my house like twice, so like I was basically living in my town, and I've been gang fucked in like five other towns, five other cities, and run out, and I, it had never come home to my hometown, and this one time I went to visit a friend, and I guess they followed me back, because they, they showed up, I was going to work at nine in the morning, and they showed up outside at like seven o'clock in the morning with all these little import cars, swirling and driving all around my neighborhood, blaring like singing trance music, and, and I stuck my head over the balcony, and they said, come down, or we're coming up. And they called me out, and I ran from them for over, like, it was, like, probably over a 10-day period. <laughs> and then I just finally, yeah, they just put me through it. Yeah, when, when I when I was get, one time I was getting gang stalked, and I was looking out my windows, and every time I looked out my windows, certain houses would cut their Christmas lights on. Like, as soon as I got to the window and looked out on purpose... And I didn't even know what gang stalking was, and I didn't even I didn't even know what gang stalking was, and uh, I ended up sneaking out of my house and I had to crawl down old railroad tracks at like two and three in the morning and stuff, and and hide behind old hills and stuff like that, and I can I can still hardly walk from where I hopped those fences by the hospital a couple of weeks ago in the middle of a blizzard and <laughs> freaking hopped these fences and bruised the back I tore my hamstring and I mean I'm scared I do yoga. But they really got me on the run, and I mean, when those when those security guys jumped me out the hospital, they nearly broke my leg. Like I haven't been able to walk properly, and I don't like them to see me when I'm vulnerable. <laughs> I don't want to be the wounded one in the pack. 
Right. Right. been trying to do that. going on 
going on. I, I, guys, I'm not doing it. Uh, I'm not, not. I'm just, I'm just not. I, I don't know about you guys, but I can't. I cannot be like intimidated over and over and over and over. You understand what I mean? Like I can't do that. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys can hear me. Yeah. Was it Sasha? <laughs> Sasha. That was Erin. From she's from Canada. Oh, oh, what part of Canada is she from? Um, I think she's from Toronto. From what? Toronto, Canada. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they got they're, they're they're stalking people bad in Canada. Yeah. So you think we're gonna go there or what? Um, I. Oh, you... Yeah, I, I, that's why I had a question. You guys hear me, okay? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, that's why I was asking you about like they've never been violent towards me. Like they ignore me. So that's why I was asking about. Um, It is. That's what it is. It's 
It's the it's the private security industry, and you're a private interest in the private security industry, yeah. and it's the corporation. It's the corporations, but you got to look at it realistically. Like if you if you look at what's going on in the Middle East, like private corporations get way more money, and they and they get way more stuff going on than even the regular army. Like if you look at the war in the Middle East, when you look at like Blackwater that's turned to XE, and you look at all these corporations, they're the ones who run everything. The corporations are way ahead of any any government around the world or any sort of state group. The, the corporations have already, like, that's like some 1950 stuff. Like, the corporations are the guys who own everything, literally. And they're the, and, and, and that's what's going on. And that's who's doing the gang stalking. And they're using the surveillance grid across the country to do the gang stalking on people. Yeah. You like, know. I know. Yeah. Well, I want, I want to clarify. Uh, I'm calling them fusion sentinels that are across the United States because black ops, okay, have meet with private security companies. So some of these private companies are Jewish mafia, uh, Mexican mafia, all different kinds mixed in. I know that it's Mexican. I- to i i saw I think it's more German, but yeah. no i th- that's yeah. that's exactly what it is i went to i went to phoenix for two weeks and the hotel i was okay. staying at it wasn't even it was like a decent hotel and there was families there and it was like a regular place for people vacationing but then within a couple days the hotel filled up with literally people from london and all parts of england and people from german and people from germany and they were there just for me they came there purposely just for me and they were a part of the gang stalking and i went to go i went to go sit down with them at a table and they were all british and and, and german and stuff uh, and i was and I, I was talking to them and stuff and they knew exactly who i was and they were the ones running the uh, the gang stalking stuff and they were following me around. It was all British and German people. Well, that's if you get high up in the CIA. They were higher. All the way up. This is where it came from. Mm-hmm. We got the, we got the, who do you, what do you think happened after Nuremberg? After Nuremberg, America bought, bought, we bought, literally paid and bought the scientists. Well, that was, is our new CIA. We got second generation of puppies in the CIA that are running this program. They were. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. I think they were higher than the CIA myself. I think they were beyond the CIA. When I was looking at them, they looked. Like, it looked like some people from some like corporate some from some stuff that there's not even like corporation stuff that the public doesn't even know about. And the way they they look so sophisticated and and advanced and stuff like that. They were like they were like they were like deep intellectuals. You know what I'm saying? They were like deep intellectuals. They weren't playing games with prepaid credit cards and stuff like that. They were like some deep guys who be, who planned stuff, and they were just sitting there looking at me, and like they were coming up with psychological strategies. They were analyzing me when I was around them. I could look by I can look by their eyes the way they were looking at me. They were looking at me like you know what I'm saying like I'm some animal in a zoo or something. But at the same time, they were pleasant and cool. They didn't even seem angry or, or agitated. They just seemed like they were studying me. 
like like a like a like a science experiment, like a science experiment, and and uh, it it was re- it was really weird, you know. Yeah, I was in I was in Phoenix, Arizona, and I went I was getting gang stalked in my neighborhood in the area I live at, in Michigan, real bad. And I went to Phoenix. This was in the spring of 2016, and I was in downtown. I, I was in downtown Phoenix, and I left and went to an area. They were stalking me and doing all this different stuff. But I went I went to an area called Glendale, and um, it was within two days. It was a bunch of British people and German people who showed up at the hotel, and. Uh, I, they came in there just for the gang stalking, and eventually, I was in the all the time. yeah. But eventually, I saw them sitting at a table. I saw a few of them sitting at a table one day while I was out, and I just got and I just wanted to I just wanted to get close to their energy, and so I went and sat down at the table with them, and they were sitting there like hanging out, smoking cigarettes and stuff, and it was cool. And I was talking to I talked to him a little bit, and one of the guys was explaining how he was. What was he saying? He was saying. He was going to some sort of spelling contest, like some sort of big spelling thing, like a le- like a lexicon of words to see how much he knows and stuff. Like the guy was smart as hell. Like, and when I, when I when I was talking to him, I was like, man, these are some deep intellectuals. Like, like they like like I, I'm a conspiracy researcher, so I've studied the CIA for years, and these guys looked beyond that. They looked like they were up in a level that was like not, you know, not no place where the public can get to. It's like invitation only type of place. And, yeah, that's and, how the ones look that I think too. Right, right. And but, but it was it was a learning it was an educational experience and uh they seemed like they kinda enjoyed it too a little bit. Like they were like they were they wanted a chance to see me up close in person. Yeah, that's what it was. It was right. A big boy. They wanted to actually like get a film of you as guests. Right. Get up right. on you. Right. Like, you know, they, they were they were pulling off they pulled off some big they they scarred me for life. They they pulled off some big psychological operations on me. Like I like they pulled off some some crazy stuff with like uh I was at a restaurant eating and I went back and the people at the restaurant started acting real weird and I got scared and I left the restaurant cuz it was a situation created that only I would know what it meant and I was supposed to be fearful and so I left the restaurant. I went back to the hotel and they had the guy from the restaurant come to the hotel in a, in a in a black SUV and so I'm sitting there and then the guy gets out of the car and he's like I'm the cab you called the cab like they knew I was leaving they they perceived me as being scared and leaving and so they had the guy from the restaurant come to the hotel in a black SUV pretending like he was the cab and and he and he's like it, it's, it's supposed to be a thing where like I'm scared I'm supposed to be running for my life or something and and so he shows up and he's like, "You're a man, aren't you? Are you scared to get in the car with me? Are you scared to drive?" And so eventually, and he's doing this in front of all bunch of women, and so I, I'm scared, and so I get in the SUV with them, and then pretty soon he pulls out a bunch of a uh, bunch of business cards, and he's like, "Yeah, if you you want you you know if you want some women, we can get you some women. You want to get high, you can get high, and all like he becomes cool. He becomes cool, and it was just a part of the gang stalking, but but I didn't know." I was I, like, they 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 can pull off some deep psychological stuff on you where you won't know what's going on, and you'll be terrified. Well, huh? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, it gets worse. The further west you go, it gets worse. Yeah. It gets way worse. But the west, see, see, the further west you go, it gets more outspoken. People speak out more about it. But but the further west you go, it gets the more sophisticated it gets. Yeah, like they have, uh, they have shelters there. In California, shelters for the gang stalking. Yeah, in California, they do have shelters for the gang stalking. But in California... Is where they got they got really deep. Uh, they, the gang stalking's worse there. Um, I I went there. I went to a channeling. I went to a channeling conference there, 
uh, to see a friend of mine, and I was only there for like a couple of days, and we were doing a channeling event, and we were hanging out. I, um, yeah, a younger guy, but he's real successful, and they pulled off some stuff so sophisticated. Uh, like I, they had me, like they had me, like running through the highways in broad daylight, like like some like some like some damn uh, you know, like some like some John Claude Van, like some you know, some like some like some some like some real stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like some face-off type stuff, movie stuff, and and uh, like like I I didn't even know what gang stalking was, but you know they they can pull off whatever they want to pull off, and that's where all the mind control is at, up in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah, that's where all the big mind control stuff is coming from. Yeah. Seattle's where the hub started. Yeah, Seattle. Yeah, that's exactly what I heard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, they've they've artificially created so many panics, like so much panic in me. Like sometimes I'll be having flashbacks. I'll just be sitting there ha hanging out, and I'll just remember all the stuff that's happened to me, and I'll think of all the, especially all the gang stalking stuff, and it creates like panic attacks and flashbacks. Like I'll be looking around, like like you know what I mean? Like I'm just gonna get up and start yelling and running in the middle of eat, eating out or something. Like it's crazy, and like the only way I can explain it is like like watching those Vietnam movies, like where those guys will have flashbacks and start tripping out and stuff. It's like that's exactly how I feel. It's like some post traumatic stress disorder type stuff. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, go go on go. Uh, I'd like to tell people something. Go 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 go. Spend some years studying the real history of the world in this country and start finding out what's not in the textbooks and what's on TV. And go on YouTube and start broadcasting it to thousands of people and watch what happens to you. Oh yeah, especially you. You live up in fucking Butt Fuck, Michigan. 
Yeah, yeah. Watch, watch what happens to you. Go, go tell the people the real truth about what's happening and what's been going on for years, and watch what, and spread it to thousands of people around the world, and watch what happens to you. Yeah, watch what happens to you. If you get gang stuck, if you get gang stuck, you you might be lucky to get gang stuck. Watch what happens to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that they they're spending a lot of money on you, and it's probably because you got some sort of in, you're an you probably an empathetic person with some sort of intuitive ability. And it used to be it used to be you had to go out and expose something and whistleblow or uncover something that people just really their people don't, really don't want out in the public. But now it can happen to you just because you might fit the the profile of somebody who might end up doing it later on. Like they might look at you as being somebody who who is going to somehow actually help people figure out what's going on on this planet, and they're trying to stop you before you do it. Yeah, I, I agree. So it's like prevent. Yeah, prevent. Yeah, exactly. Prevent, and then they and then they make money off you, Sasha. You know, if, if, if they're doing all this stuff, they're making money off of you by putting you on the list. Yeah, and insurance, and then you also have to consider, you also have to consider the hive mind 5G that's about to be unleashed, because um, if you think outside the box, and you have not been, uh, they have not been able to control your thinking, your mind, um, you know, that's a problem too, because, yes. you know, they want everybody with the hive mind coming out with this 5G, which is a very, uh, uh, I'll use the word strong. <laughs> um, yeah, that's 